Okay, folks, um, this is Michael and um, uh, we, we've received the third prasad. Uh, it's a different kind of a headline this time. It is long, involved ones, almost sentences. It simply has like one word, I think, half-borns, half-borns. And, and then the text is, with more time, and despite <clears throat> the myriad experiences and changes of the multitudinous and diverse, parentheses, and mostly spread out and separated, never touching or knowing each other on a massive planet, in parentheses, peoples and cultures, the unapproved and hidden are, because of peculiar, pecu, peculiarity of them, they're, they're everywhere and always among all the many evolving and refining definitions of human reality, life, different as they could possibly be, and never for a second, or even slightly, partially, or indirectly included in that light of the obviously true, the commonsensical, by any culture. I think I... I I see what you're saying. It sounds complex, but really, I've been saying about how how diverse our experiences are and everything, and how we've seeped into every possible uh, possibility of being human. That amongst all that, they're saying that the re reinforcing what they were saying before is that it, it, that it became increasingly invisible by pointing out that it was. Um, that not even for a second, and it wasn't even partially, and it wasn't even indirectly, and slightly. Wow, they're really ramming this point home. <laughs> they said that there were some gardeners of consciousness uh, uh, that uh, that they would get close, and that they would give them everything, but the, the one thing that they they never got was the unapproved and hidden. And that that was that they made a constant so that I guess at some point someone would figure out that there was one thing missing. Maybe somebody did. Or maybe we failed to. Wow. Anyway. I guess they're, they're, they're really uh, going on over and over on um, what a big deal it must have been to them uh, that that we could almost like blow it, blow it always, uh, go everywhere but that one place. Like you ever looking for something? You ever hear this t saying, it's in the last place you look? I don't know, I'm just kind of like, wow, I'm just having this thing where I'm thinking, well, isn't that part like, isn't that like kind of human? Yeah, part of this peculiar, pecu part of this peculiarity, the relative uh, dash. The relative upstart humans have another common defining characteristic. Colon. That means, what, it, it, what is that defining characteristic? Characteristic? Only half ready for life at the time of birth. Only half ready for life at the time of birth. Um, parentheses. Relative to all other brother or sister species comprising the citizens of Earth. And friends. Um, so, wow. They, okay, they are, and they say humans alone are, totally dependent for their survival upon the goodwill of the fully grown, which is often parents, but not of necessity and certainly not always. Uh, well, you know, we know that. I mean, that's part of our, uh, we know that. But they're saying something different. They're saying, you know, we, we make ourselves a superior race and, you know, I've studied psychology, you know, and, and, and sociology and anthropology and um, that's what they call what makes us actually different from uh, the other Earth planet mates is, well, that's what they're saying. This, this is how we're different, is that we, we have this period where we require a, dep a dependent, we, we are dependent on, on a mother or caretaker. Um, 
we require a lot of things. And if we don't get them, we get lots of chronic pain. We're dependent on others, and they, they say in these social sciences. And that that is what caused our, us to have language, you know, all that time with the mother, being taught, being corresponding. Oh, this is, uh, that connection is what causes all that learning to go on. Uh, language, um, language, and um, they think all the things that make us what we would call human, you know, literary or social or, you know, interacting, wanting to express, all that, is, is, is because of that, what they're calling a lack. But, okay, I'll just put it in for the record. Here's what they're saying. He's, they said the relative of star humans. So they're almost, in a way, saying, okay, relatively, we are a new race. And um, most species have been around a lot longer than us. And uh, so I guess they look at, look at us like the new kids on the block. Well, that's, that's a totally different perspective now, isn't it? I mean, do we ever think of ourselves that way? No, <laughs> we couldn't let ourselves. But we have another common defining characteristic, and we're only half ready for life at the time of birth. Well, okay, so we're only half ready, and what they're saying is relative to all the other species, and so that they're saying, obviously, which is the truth, you know, that uh, all the other species that come out, and they are ready to, within seconds or minutes, able to, to uh, I think it's the way they figured it out is that it's, they're able to uh, function at the level of like a uh, human would, would, would be able to at four years old. So that is make us very different. I know, you know, I mean, that is a very different thing to happen. So. You're looking at that. You're looking, I think, at the basis of our humanity. I think that's what they're saying. Only they're saying that this is what makes us inferior. Because we don't get... Well, they don't say what we don't get. I think they're going to be telling us some good things, too. But that's what they're talking about. Okay. So, that's it for now. This is the, the third facade, my commentary on it. I didn't expect to be, I didn't expect to be uh, under, understanding them so much, resonating with what they're saying. And they've really got a lever under really what something is deep inside of us. And they've got a, a lever right there. And we are always seeing, oh, that it goes one way, but hey, they're saying, hey, mate, I think they're starting to say, here's a place that you haven't looked. <clears throat> Oh, why? Isn't that the unimproved and hidden? We haven't looked there, have we? We haven't even considered anything that I'm saying here now. And I don't know. I'm just saying these things. I don't know what... I don't, don't, I don't think it's anything to do with their talking to right now. We'll get there, we're going to say it. Okay, that's it. I'm out of here. It's the third facade. Good night.